Hi everybody, today we are doing something new. Something that I have not done before. Well, I have, but not like trying to make it sound halfway decent. I'm recording this without a voiceover. Very scary. Well, not really, because I'm probably going to screw this up and there's probably going to be a voiceover anyway, but whatever. I am wrapping some Christmas presents today, and let me tell you, I am in no mood. I don't feel like doing it. I don't want to do it. It's usually my favorite thing to do, but after everything that's happened the past couple of weeks and, you know, the past 37 years, it's, um, it's not really, it's not really my Christmas, I don't think. I just think it's just, it's not for me. But maybe if I wrap some presents and get some stuff out from off my bookcases and under the tree, or tree adjacent, because my dog will definitely pee on these presents if I put them under the tree, maybe it'll make me feel better. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm bringing you guys along for the ride, and I don't know how long this is going to be. Or why my camera is crooked again. Oh, oh, look, look, it's real life. Okay, that's fine. So... The way I go about this, handy little tips and tricks for you guys. These are lingerie boxes. I got mine from Walmart. They're, you know, they're not much. They're not very expensive. Um, they're pretty small. I like these because they're small enough for a shirt. Not a bulky shirt, but you know, I have a bunch of t-shirts here that I have to wrap. Um, I like to find a box that's the right size, whether it's the lingerie box. I have a shirt box over here I'm going to use, and I have some other square boxes underneath all of that junk. I like to try to put as many presents as possible in the same size box, because that means I can roll out my wrapping paper and cut the exact same pieces for every all of these boxes. I already have paper cut for all of them. So, it's not a big thing of me having to pull the paper out, put the present down, cut it, move the paper away, wrap the present, then do it all over again. So I like to go through, cut my paper. I'm not, I haven't cut all my paper for everything, but I have enough cut for the things I need to wrap. And another thing I do, see these two, oh, this thing is so heavy. This Kauai rock art, Hawaii rock art, I don't know what the children are saying these days. These boxes, even though one weighs nothing because it's cotton rounds, and one of them is two pounds, um, they're the same width. Not the same depth, obviously, but, well, they kind of are. They're not the same size exactly, but they're going to take the same amount of wrapping paper. See what I'm saying? So I like to find things like this, stack these together, cut them together so I know, all right, that's done. Of course, my papers over here aren't labeled or anything, so who knows what I'm going to pull out. But the first thing I'm going to do is start packaging these up. These are the Walmart boxes, like I said. I will not, under any circumstances, no matter how little money I have, ever buy Dollar Tree boxes, because no, I just won't do it. Um, I did one year, and I was like, I'm just going to get all these boxes from the Dollar Tree, they're only a dollar, and I had the hardest time doing everything, just because it was they were so floppy. These aren't great, like I prefer these to be a little bit sturdier, but what are you going to do? They're pretty cheap. And all I've done there is glue the flaps down. That's not something you need to do. I usually do it for at least one side of the present, just so you don't have this situation going on. Because no matter how many times you push these things out, they're always going to be kind of floppy there. So, I'm going to get these done in here. And while I'm doing... This little, I'm only going to do one of these because I'm not going to sit here and make you guys watch me glue down all these flaps. I thought it would be a good time to discuss housekeeping things. Well, not really housekeeping. I just, I know I've gotten a lot of messages about this. And I just wanted to, you know, tell you guys what happened. Because 
after what happened to me, it is extremely important that I make sure it doesn't happen to anyone else because it was horrible. So, here's my box. I'm gonna start off with my tissue paper. Which I'm trying not to make go everywhere. I don't have a huge workspace to see these videos. Not a, not a lot of room to work. And I'm not packaging these in any special way. I'm just getting these in boxes, pretty much. So, I'm going to show you guys what I have here. These were, um, you know, they were like little after Halloween t-shirts. They were a dollar forty. They were marked a dollar forty nine, but I think they rang up a dollar. And I just got these for my friends' kids. What size is this? One? This is large because I have two of them. Okay, so this one is for Clara. Oh wait, I'm getting to the story. Okay. <clears throat> I also put names on the outside of boxes so I can stack them all up, wrap them as they're done. Because I might spend a day, you know, packing everything up, depending on how I'm feeling, depending on how depressed I am about my life. So, what happened was, I had a doctor's appointment in, I think, August? Yeah, it was like, no, it was, it was before that. It was like, July, June, July, somewhere up in there. June, July. It was not August. And, you know, it was just a routine checkup. Go get my crazy pills refilled. All of that jazz. And while I was there, well, before I went, I was, I'd was been telling my mom, I was like, hey, there's this, like, bump on my foot. I don't know how to fold church, y'all. I'm sorry. These are children. They don't care. I would like that to look a little better on the inside, but again, children don't care. So, make sure I put the tag off, too. You know, I'm telling my mom, I have this, like, I have this bump on my foot. It looks like an ant bite. Because I showed it to her one day when she was over at my house, and she's like, I don't know what that is. It looks like an ant bite. And I was like, well, I don't go outside. I'm not an outside boy. How did this terrible fate befall me? She said, well, when you go to the doctor, just ask. So I go to my doctor. She says, how you doing? I said, oh, I'm terrible. She says, how's your depression? And I said, oh my God, it's all consuming. And how's your health generally? Oh, I convinced myself I'm having either a stroke, a heart attack, or hysterical pregnancy at least three times a day. So she says, okay, well, sounds pretty typical for you. And I'm like, yeah, pretty much. So I said, but I do have this thing on my foot. That I had this thing on my toe, and I was, like, so prepared. I had even taken my shoe off, taken my socks off, purelled my foot, because she's not a podiatrist. I don't... Just the idea of having to deal with people's feet that have been in... So people's feet. People's... Well, I guess it is feet, huh? People's feet that have been in socks. I'm just like, no, that's not the look. So, foot is all nicely purelled. And she comes in, and I'm like, you know, I have this dot on my foot. It it hurts a little bit when I walk. Like, it's hard for me to walk around for too long. It's hard for me to walk around for too long. It's red. It's a little swollen. Why does this one have... This is the dog. What is he doing? Um, It's red. It's a little swollen. I said, you know, it's not like something I'm losing sleep over or something that's keeping me from doing anything. It's just, it's red. It's a little swollen and I don't know what's going on. So she looks at it and she says, oh, was it a spider? And I said, listen, I don't, I don't know where these people think I'm going. I, I don't live in the Amazon. I don't mess with bugs. I, I don't like bugs. I don't know what, what's going on with all these people think, you know, I'm going places and doing things. So I'm like, I don't know. I said, if it was an ant, spider, I don't know. It looks like a pip. What is wrong with this pen? Oof. Who is this for? What is her name? I hope Michelle's watching this. Because I don't know her kid's name. Um, correct. So, 
She says, oh, have you tried soaking it? And I'm like, well, no, not really. Should, should that be something I should be doing? Oh, yeah, you know, try soaking it. It's probably just a little bug bite. So I say, okay, you're, you're the doctor. You went to school. I went to clubs. So this is for my friend Michelle. She's not a grandma. But she's actually in Branson, Missouri right now, so I keep texting her. I'm like, how was your cream a week? Did you go to sleep at 6 p.m. and wake up at 4 a.m. to read the newspaper in McDonald's? Because that's, I mean, but really, I'm more of an old person than she is. So, she says soak it. So I'm like, all right. So get my canning pot, which I don't use for canning anymore since I've been putting my feet in it. Fill it up with some hot water. Fill it up with some Epsom salts. And I start soaking it, and I do it, and, you know, it doesn't seem like it's doing anything, but who doesn't love a nice, good foot soap, right? So, I do that, and my toe does not seem to be getting any better. It doesn't, it's not, it's still not super painful, but it's, it's getting a little bit more difficult for me to walk around, and, like, it hurts when I put on shoes, and it is definitely turning purple went from like a pink to a red and then it was turning purple but the dot was gone so the spider bite had left the building the ant bite the Japanese beetle bite whatever it was that was gone so I'm like okay well I don't know and then one night I am laying in bed and nighttime is terrible for me I am terrified of nighttime like if you ever want to like get me and do something terrible to me just like Take me to a place where it's always nighttime. Not afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of night because I have extremely high anxiety. Like, crippling, go to the emergency room every time I have a panic attack anxiety. And when I have anxiety, when I have a panic attack, I call my mom. And I'm like, oh my god, talk me through this. Come over or talk me through this. And usually, I haven't had a really bad panic attack in a long time because I am so medicated. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. But, she's usually able to talk me down, or she comes over, or we go to the emergency room. Like, we used to go to the emergency room two or three times a month when my panic attacks were, like, really bad. So, because I am anxious, and I'm very aware of something going wrong with my body, I feel, like, this weird numbness in my toe. And I have partial neuropathy because I was diabetic for a couple of years. So my feet aren't in great shape, but I still feel like this weird tingly num numbness that's like coming up my shin. So I start fixating on it and I eventually, it's, this is August, hmm, this is the end of August. Look, this is, this I don't know why this is a thing. I think it's because it's so thin. Like, you can't wear this as a shirt. Well, I guess some people could. But it's got, like, a little... I think it's a sleeping thing. But then why would you sleep with this? I don't know. It was cute. It was a dollar. So, I had this creeping pain. Not pain, but, like, uncomfort coming up my shin. So, I'm like, oh, that's a blood clot. I'm like, I know that's a blood clot. I know it. That's what's happening. It was the day before Labor Day. My It was the day before the 1st. I don't know if we celebrated Labor Day on the 1st. I don't know how it felt this year. I don't remember. But it was a Saturday. And my mom was having her boyfriend's kid come into town with the grandkids. And I was like, I can't call mom. She's got to work tomorrow. She's got these people coming in. Like, I can't call my mom. So I called my sister. This is my, um, my handicapped sister. And it's like 9 o'clock at night, and she's like, hello! And I was like, I need you to come to the emergency room with me. And she's like, well, why? And I was like, I don't have time to tell you. I just need you to come with me. Like, I don't know, like, what I expect you to do, because you can't drive me there, and you're not very good in the crisis, but, like, just come with me and keep me company, because I'm pretty sure I have a blood clot and I'm going to die. So... I go to the emergency room, her husband drops her off. What am I doing with this shirt? I'm so sorry, shirt. I don't know what to do because you have a giant horn on top of you. So she drops me off in the emergency room. The guy, the nurse comes in, she's like, oh yeah, she's like, that doesn't look good. 
she's like, what was it, a bug bite? Were you in the Amazon? And I was like, no, contrary to popular belief, I don't spend any time in the Amazon. I don't leave my house. I can't remember the last time I even left my, like, area code, my zip code. So, doctor comes in, and he's like, oh, yeah, he's like, you know what, we're gonna give you some antibiotics, but let me give you a, let me get you an x-ray just to make sure. So I'm like, okay, so I'm feeling okay. Like, I'm not, like, having a complete, full-blown, gonna-die panic attack yet. And then he comes in. <coughs> Excuse me. The uh, x-ray tech comes in. It's the middle of the night. It is, like, I don't know, this is, like, 11 o'clock. That's the middle of the night for me. Like, I should have been sleeping seven hours ago. The x-ray tech comes in, takes the x-ray, and it's like an hour later and he comes back and he's like, hey, uh, you have a bone infection in your toe and we're going to have to transport you to a different hospital because we don't have the people here to deal with it. And, you know, you're going to have to stay in the hospital for, you know, two or three days with constant antibiotics. And he goes through this whole thing. I lose it because I can't be away from the dog. Like, the dog, me, like, we are, no. That's not going to happen. So I'm like, okay, can you just cut it off right now? Because that is what I would rather do instead of having to spend time away from my dog. So he's like, no, you know, we're, we're going to get the ambulance. We're going to get you there. And he's speaking with like a real sense of urgency here. Like this is something that needs to be done. So I know I did not pay $14 for this. My mom would kill me if I gave her a $14 ornament. So is this story going anywhere? I can't think. So traumatized. Wait, this this lights up. Oh, look how cute. Can you even see that? So, yeah, I say, listen, I can't go to the emergency room, and I can't leave the this emergency room and go to another emergency room because I live by myself. Thank God. I said my dog is home by himself. I can't just like pick up and leave. Like I don't have any. I don't have a change of clothes. I have nothing. Like, I just have, like, my wallet, which, you know, in hindsight, that probably was something that I could have done, just, like, left and had somebody deal with the dog. My sister has a key to my house. My mom has a key to my house. It's not like it would have been a big deal, but I was like, I need to go home. Okay, see, that doesn't work for me. And that doesn't work for me. I need to go home and... Oh my god, is this directly next to the microphone on my cam on my phone? I need to go home. I need to get some stuff because if you're telling me I'm going to the hospital for two to three days, I need my laptop. I need to work on something. I was like, I need to pack some knitting. I don't even knit anymore, but I was like, I need to pack knitting. I need to pack stuff. I was so worried about having like uploads on time on YouTube, which, come on, nobody watches my videos anyway, but still. So I called my mom on the way back from the hospital to my house. Doctor lets me leave. He's like, I don't advise it. And I was like, I don't care. So I call my mom and I'm like, I need you to meet me at the house. I have to be checked into a different hospital because I have a bone infection and it's, it's apparently pretty bad. So my mom comes, we do, we get the dog situated. We figure out a plan that she's going to come and get the dog tomorrow, but it can't go back to her house because... Her boyfriend's grandkids are going to be there, and I'm like, no, I don't want my dog around children, because I don't like them, and he probably won't either. Get it all situated. Get back to the hospital, and the doctor's like, oh, I'm surprised you came back, and I was like, you literally just told me my foot was going to fall off. Like, what am I supposed to do here? Just run? Which, not going to lie, I was kind of thinking about it. Um, go to a doctor, you know, in the shifty part of town, just be like, can you cut it off? Because, let me tell you guys. I hate my toes. Not like, oh, I hate the way they look because nobody has like, oh my god, look how beautiful your toes are. No. Like, they're not a pretty part of the body. So, I'm just like, I thought about not coming back, but I know I didn't pay $10 for an ornament for Carl. I like to give my mom and her boyfriend ornaments every year. Usually it's a food thing, but I think I've bought them all the food things they eat. Is this one going to fit in here? Okay, yeah. So I go back to the hospital. The doctor comes in, he explains to me, and I'm like still just completely freaking out because that's what I do. Wow, that has a grain? Who knew? So she, the doctor says, yeah, you know, it's a bone infection. We can't really take these things too lightly because it could get to the bloodstream. And 
you know, it can do this and it can do that. And my grandpa actually died from osteomyositis. Oste is that what it is? I keep, I'm so bad with like, remember osteomyositis, osteom bone infection. He actually died of complications from a bone infection. They wanted to take his foot. He said, oh no, no, not today. Not today, Satan. So he eventually died because he wouldn't let them take his foot, which at this point, I'm just like, not take his foot, take his toe. They only want to take his toe. I think it maybe it, it got to a point where they want to take his foot, but yeah. So he's like, we're going to start him on some antibiotics and then we're going to transfer him to the other hospital where there's a orthopedic surgeon or there's, you know, I, I don't know what's going on. So they start me on the antibiotics. The nurse comes in and she's like, hey, here's a bunch of Valium because you need to shut up with your freaking out. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right, calm down. Don't, don't come at me because of my mental health because I will go full on bananas up in this place and start punching people. So she gives me some Valium and then I'm like laying on the bed like, oh, and I pass out. I don't know how long I pass out for. I think it's like four in the morning when I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, am I still alive? Is, am I Did they take the toe? And my mom's like, you can go home. And I was like, what do you mean I can go home? I thought I was literally dying. And she's like, uh, no, 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 the doctor's going to come in here. So the doctor comes in and he's like, hello, Mr. Chenever. And I'm like, hello, Dr. Fernandez. And he says, okay, we, well, we did some blood work after we told you you were going to die. And it turns out, according to your blood work, you're not going to die. So I'm just going to give you, like, some antibiotics to take home. So he gives me these antibiotics. My insurance doesn't cover them because why would insurance cover something that controls like a raging infection? Aww. So I take the antibiotics, I come home and whatever. And my toe gets less purple. It gets less red. Now it's just pink. It's still swollen. I go back to my doctor and I'm like, hey, you know, my toe is still kind of swollen here. I don't know. Um, I don't know what's going on with that. So she says, well, let's get an MRI because you can't tell a bone infection from an x-ray. And I'm like, well, you know, that's not what Dr. Fernandez told me. So my MRI is like three weeks later and I go in, I get the MRI last, not this last Wednesday, the Wednesday before that. It was the, oh gosh, I don't even know. I go for the MRI in the morning at like 8.30. I'm kind of freaked out because never had an MRI wouldn't recommend it if you can avoid it. Not not my favorite thing in the world. So I get the MRI. Me and my mom go out because we're in we're out of town pretty much. Oh no, two dollars. We're out of town pretty much. I mean we're not like out of town, but we're not where we live. You know, we had to go to the big hospital. Not the like satellite off. We had to go to main campus, is what they call it. So me and my mom go off, and I'm just like, I'm exhausted afterwards, because anytime I do anything, I'm like, oh my god, I'm exhausted afterwards. So we go off, and I come home afterwards, and I fall asleep, because I like my naps, and I haven't taken a nap yet, and I've been up really long, and, you know, it's this whole thing. Y'all don't even know what I'm doing right now, but it's okay. So... My mom calls me at like two because my phone, I have emergency bypass on my phone. So my mom's the only one who could get through because listen, there is nothing so important that you need to call me. Like, I'm sorry. No, nothing. Um, she calls me and she's like, Hey, I'm coming to get you. You have to go to the emergency room because you do in fact have a bone infection and it's bad and you need to go to the emergency room and i'm like what and she's like you know your doctor called me her nurse called me the mri people called me because i wasn't answering my phone when i was my case of emergency number so i'm like all right i'm not thrilled with this plan but okay i don't know why i creased that right i don't know i do know why i'll explain later on what i'm doing right here let me get through this story of whoa so I go to the emergency room, they check me in, I get admitted, I don't really have a plan for what to do with the dog, but I'm like, let me get this over with, because I just want it over with. So 
the doctor, you know, he explains everything to me. He's like, you know, it's a bone infection. It's pretty serious. It can lead to a blood infection. It can do this. It can do that. So let's just get this taken care of. He said, we really don't have to admit you, but we need you in the hospital to get you to get this process started because you're going to have to be on these antibiotics for the first I heard was six weeks. Then I heard three weeks. Then I heard six months. I still don't know. Like, I, I don't, am I going to, I may turn another year older. It, it might be the 4th of July. I don't know. So he says, we really just need you here. Like, you're not going to die. Like, if we send you home, you're not going to die. But we need you in the hospital because there's a lot of red tape with getting these um, to get your insurance to cover to cover the antibiotics, the home health care, the aid. And I'm like, why do I need all these things? Like, I understand the antibiotics. Why do I need all this other stuff? So I'm like, okay. I said, well, let's. I'll stay here tonight. You get everything going. And then we'll go from there. So then it's the next day, and there's another doctor in rounds, and he's, I'm telling him what happened, and he's like, you should never have left that emergency room. And I was like, well, I did. You know, they, they told me to go home, they gave me some oral antibiotics, and he's like, this is not treated with oral antibiotics. Like, you need, what am I wrapping? Okay, this is Camille. You need to be on antibiotics here in the hospital. You need to go home with them. Okay. So the whole reason I'm in the hospital for, this is my second day there, is because they need to get the, they need to get the insurance to approve the at-home infusions, which is what that is. And they also need the infusion company to come out. There's too much paper in here, but I'm being lazy. Get the infusion company to come out, send somebody to teach me how to do this because, I mean, I was diabetic for years. I took care of myself. Wasn't, you know, I never had any help with that. I was like, okay, but I guess I need help with this. So they finally get the okay from the insurance company at like six, uh, you know, it was like, no, it was, it was before that. It was like four something on for, on Thursday. And the nurse came in. She's like, I know we were trying to get you home today and back to your dog. Because at this point, my dog has been staying by himself. My mom has been coming in the morning. She's been coming in the afternoon. But he's been sleeping by himself in the house. And I'm just like, he thinks I'm dead. That's terrible. My poor dog. What are we going to do? Um, let's get that down because it's going to aggravate me. So, eventually the nurse comes from the infusion company. She tells me everything. And... I get to come home on Friday and deal with this pump mess. And it's it's not horrible. Why is this not sticking? It's not horrible. It's just, it's, it's a pain because it's like, it's supposed to take two hours to infuse, which not a big deal because I can, I could be doing it right now. I could be doing it while I'm at the grocery store. I could be doing it wherever, but it's just, it's like, it takes a long time and I don't like... I don't like having to do something. I've never been good with having to do something. Like, I do things because I want to do them, but, like, having to do it, it just, it feels like it's crumping my style when I have no style, I have nothing to do um, besides, like, these things, and I can do other things during them. Anyway, the home health care nurse comes over on Saturday, and he's like, hey, I'm going to be drawing your blood once a week because the vancomycin I'm on is apparently super hardcore and it can destroy your kidneys like overnight. So good thing I don't drink. Wait, is that your liver? Anyway, I don't drink. Um, so he's got to come. He's got to draw the blood. He's got to sign me up. He doesn't draw any blood. He just signs me up and he's like, I'm going to, you know, once I get my orders, I'm going to come out, draw the blood, change the bandage. We'll do this. And I'm like, oh, okay. So then later that day, this is like the only funny thing about this, is I get a call from a woman. It's it's Saturday. Actually, it might have been before he came. I don't remember the timeline. It's just, it was a lot. I get this call from a woman, and she says, Hello, Mr. Adam. And I'm like, hello. She's like, this is Angela. How are you doing? And I'm like, well, you know, I still have all my toes, so that sucks. But, you know, aside from that, she's like, I understand that you're on, you know, long-term antibiotics to play for your osteomyositis, whatever. I can't even remember, y'all. This paper is, it's ribbed, and it's so thick. 
All these papers are from TJ Maxx last year, two years ago, by the way. So, she calls and she's like, I want to set up an appointment with you, but I have to watch the game. And it was Saturday. She's like, I will either call you later or after the game tomorrow because I have to watch the game. And I was like, of course the Saints game is more important than, you know, whatever, whatever. Because I don't know what she's coming for yet. You know, I'm just like, the hospital sending her, the insurance is paying for her. She must be necessary. So she's like, I will call you either later on today or after the game and we will set up an appointment. Like, okay, so later today comes, she doesn't call. The game comes and goes, and she doesn't call. And my mom's like, has that home health care nurse called you back? And I was like, no, she hasn't, but um, not the home health care. She's like, she says she's the aide, and I don't, oh, this is aggravating me. Look how that's not straight. No, 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 no. Um, oh, that's going to bug me. So... But I'm not going to let it because, you know, it could be worse. I could not have any toes. So, she doesn't call Saturday. She doesn't call Sunday because of the game. And then when she calls me Monday, she's like, Hello, Mr. Adam. This is Angela. I'm sorry. I was watching the game yesterday and I couldn't call you back. And I was like, I get it. You know, it's like the weekends, whatever. I don't, I don't know why I need to see this woman, but I'm like, okay. She's like, when is good for me to come over? What time is it good? When is good? I'm making her sound like I, she speaks as bad as I do. What time is good? What time is it? Ugh. What time is good for me to come over? Is that? I don't even know if that's still right. Why does that sound so weird? Okay, that's still bugging me, but you know what? Is this for a child? No, this is for my mom. Oh, no, I have to fix it. Um, okay, that's good enough. She doesn't care. I'll put ribbon over it. Slap a ribbon on it. Oh, you know, when is it? When is a good time? Mm. Oh, paper. When is a good time? And I'm like, whatever. You know, like I'm home. My car doesn't work. That's a whole different other. That's a whole other. That's a whole. That's a. Oh my god! I can't even get this. Has hurt my eyes. So I'm like, oh, you know, I'm home. The car doesn't work. You can't go anywhere because something, ex my starter stop work out. That, that'll that be for the next round of presents. So she says, okay, well, I'm going to come over on Monday morning. And I'm like, excuse me, can I ask, like, what are you coming over for? Because the nurse is coming over to draw the blood and he's going to, you know, take the blood to the lab and he's going to change the dressing. I was like, why? Not like, why do I need you? Just pretty much, why do I need you? Like, why are you coming to the house? What are we going to do? She's like, oh, she, she sounded so sweet, too. She's like, oh, I'm coming over to assist you with taking a bath or a shower and helping you if you need to go to the bathroom and clean up afterwards. And I was like, what? She's like, I'm helping you for your personal hygiene needs and anything else you may need me for. And I was like, oh, okay, um, Angela. I am, like, so capable, first of all, uh, well, not so capable, I'm capable enough to bathe myself and, you know, get into the bathroom and out most of the time, unless, you know, I'm tripping over clothes that are just sitting all over the floor that I haven't washed yet. So I'm like, oh, like a, like a real, like, nurse's, nursing aide, right? And she's like, yes, sir, what time would be good for you? And I was like, listen, this is super sweet, Angela, like, I am just, thank you, that is... That is so kind of you, but also hell to the no. Like, no. <laughs> I can't imagine me being like, oh yeah, I have, you know, nothing wrong with my toe. There's literally not, my toe looks like nothing's wrong with it at all. There's no wound. I am perfectly capable of doing everything. Like, I had been to Walmart that morning before she called, you know, driving down the, um, driving down the highway in my truck that is not working correctly. So I'm like, oh, well, I don't need that. And she's like, you don't need help going to the bathroom. And I was like, yeah, well, I do, but not from you. Like, no. And she was like, you don't need any help in the shower or taking a bath. And I was like, um, thinking to myself, like, oh, my God, I would love, like, a sponge bath. Like, just, like, a nice, nice spa day. Um, but then I'm like, wait, no, that would happen in my own house. I can't even fit in the tub because I'm too tall. So I'm just like, no, you know, I'm good. Okay, and I said, you know, I want you to go and help somebody who needs help. 
She's like, I understand, you know, they just figure that when people are receiving home health care, they might need some help with things, so... And I'm thinking to myself, like, does she do dishes? Because, Miss Angela, you could come help me with that. Like, these dishes need to get done. I can't get my arm wet. So, this is bugging the out of me. I'm very aware of my language because I don't want to say the things I want to say most of the time. But I can edit out of videos when I say like what I do, you know, like doing a voiceover. I'm like, ah, cool. So yeah, that was that. The guy came out on Thursday to draw my blood. He's like, hmm, you know what? This isn't working. I'm going to have to, because I have a pick line in. You know, I have a pick line. Uh, he's supposed to be able to draw. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, my mom's going to disown me. Well, she hasn't yet, so I doubt she will. He can't draw from the pick line. He can't get a needle in my vein to draw blood. So he's like, you have to go to like the diagnostics place and get this done because we don't know what these drugs are doing to your kidneys yet. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, all right. So my car is fixed. My car's been fixed since Saturday. But on Sunday when I went off and came back, it was smoking. So there's like an antifreeze leak. My mechanic neighbor, he's like, you know, you can drive it, but don't go like, you know, too far. So I'm driving to this diagnostic place, which is, it's not that far from my house. And it's, you know, not far at all. And my car is like smoking and I get to the place and it's like 645 because... I don't have an appointment. They take walk-ins. It's one of those places where they send, like, um... Like, I think my mom had to go to a place like this. She might have gone to the hospital, but it's where they... This is not the right piece of paper. Where they send people to have, like, drug tests for work. And it's... it's I don't know if they have them everywhere. It's called Quest Diagnostic. So, I get there, and it's, like, it's cold. It's early. And I'm just like, I want to get this done. Because I can't start my infusion until I get it done. And the later I start my infusion the later I have to start my second infusion. So it's already 7 o'clock, and it takes me three hours, even though it's only supposed to take me two. It takes me three hours because I'm special. Oh, I don't like that. Whatever. So, I'm like, I need to get there at 7, get out of there by 8. If I start my infusion at 8, I'll be done by 11, which means I can start my infusion, maybe cheat in an hour at nighttime to 7, and then be done by 10 because I don't want to be up all night, you know, infusing. So I get there, the woman comes in, she locks me out because it's still too early for me to go in. There's another guy out there, and, um, you know, we're just waiting, and then she, she opens the door. She's like, I see her walking around, and she's, like, on her phone, or she's on the phone, not, like, a personal call. Like, she's on the phone, and she keeps, like, going back between rooms, and I'm like, what is this woman doing? I am fascinated by, like... All her stuff, like, what's going on with her? What's her story? Tell me everything. So she lets us in, and she's like, okay. She's like, do either of y'all have paper orders? And I'm like, what is the paper? I don't think this is the right one either. Yeah, this is the right one. I'm like, what is a paper order? What are we doing here? Who is this for? It's for Carl. I was like, I don't have paper orders. She's like, well, you know, there's this place next to them. It's in, like, the strip mall. It's called Oh My Buns. I think they used to sell coffee and cinnamon buns, which I don't think we're the right place for that. Something so niche. Anyway, it closed down a while ago. It's been empty. Somebody's moving into it now, so I'm very excited to see what it is. I hope it's a Hobby Lobby, even though I know it's not. So she's like, unless you have paper orders, I can't do anything because the people next door, their electrician, knocked the power out to the whole mall yesterday. And my internet's not working, and I can't, you know, I don't know what I need to do for you, you two guys if I don't have orders. So the guy, is, the guy next to me, he's like, I don't have any orders. Like, he tried to come yesterday when the power was out because she remembered him. And then she's like, you can go to the nearest, the next quest, which is, it was not, like, I mean, I could barely make it to this one that was, like, two miles away from my house. And... I was like, oh yeah, you just need to go get on the interstate. And I was like, oh no, 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 honey, honey, honey. Even if I had a good store, good car, I am not getting on the interstate. I said, I am too anxious. I will end up killing myself, killing pedestrians, knocking down trees, 
that little Swedish girl who loves the environment is going to yell at me. I was like, no, I can't do it. Is she Swedish? Greta Thunderburger? I don't know. Gerda? I, I, don't, I don't know anything, y'all. I'm sorry. So, she's like, oh no. She's like, you have to go to this other place and they'll take you. And I was like, okay, listen. I can't continue getting my antibiotics that are keeping me alive if I don't get my blood work done. I said, if I come on Monday, if I come back on Monday, that, is, that was wrong. If I come back on Monday, are you going to be able to get my lab work to Bioscript, who are the infusion people, on time for me to get my delivery of my second antibiotics before Thanksgiving when I'm not going to get a delivery on Thursday. They send like a, they're supposed to send a week at a time, but they called and said, we don't have your blood work yet because the nurse didn't come get it because he didn't have orders to do it. It's not his fault. So now I am waiting until tomorrow to go get the blood work to see if I have any kidneys left. And yeah, that's where I'm at right now. And this is a pain. Children stare at me like, I don't, I don't, I know it's not, like, a big deal. Like, I don't really care that children are staring at me. Like, I'm not like, oh, my God, quit looking at me. Quit looking at me like I'm a freak. Like, because maybe they're just looking at me because I'm seven feet tall. I don't know. But, like, they're looking. I've seen, like, adults. Because I walk, like, I'm like, I have to live my life. Like, I got stuff to do. This is too long, so I'm going to, I'll show you guys this later. Because I'm just, I'm engrossed with this storytelling. Like, I got stuff to do. I can't just sit at home and wait for this to be done. So I'd get in my car. It catches on fire, but I still keep driving it. And, like, I'm going out and I'm doing things because, you know, I just, I can't stop everything because I'm infusing. So, you know, like, there's people staring at me and, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel great. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, they're curious because I've never seen anyone. I mean, I've seen people, like, walking around with oxygens. I've never seen anybody walking around with IV lines coming out of their arms and they're carrying like a, I have like a crossbody bag, you know, it's, a, it's like a little one that's just big enough for my wallet and my keys and stuff like that, but it's got the pump in it. And I, I always, I'm always checking the progress of it. I'm, I'm not doing it like, oh, let me whip this out and check this like weird breast implant looking thing in front of everybody. But, like, I, saw, I took it out, and I saw a kid, and he was just, like, staring down at me, and he, like, pulled on his mom's shoulder, and he whispered to him, and I was like, oh, my God. These people probably think I am, like, a plague victim over here. Don't know what's going on. And I just... It's weird. I, like, I don't like the focus to be put on me for anything, really. I mean, at least not that. Like, I think the kids don't understand what's going on, and they're curious, but I would so much prefer a parent to be like, hey, my son has questions. Can he ask you what horrible thing you've done to have to walk around with antibiotics in the craft section of Walmart while you're loudly complaining about how there's nothing good at the craft section at Walmart? And I would be like, sure. Listen, I didn't do anything. It was a bunch of medical mal mal malpractice. Get a second opinion. Don't trust anyone. Adults lie. Your parents are liars. No. I wouldn't do that. Well... I mean, I guess it depends on the mood. Like, have I had coffee yet? Was breakfast good? Like, did I have... This is supposed to be so satisfying how these need up, and it's not. Is this for Carl, or is this for Mom? This is for Carl. Eh. Carl's lived a long life. He'll enjoy this. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Hold on. Okay, that's fine. So... Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not, like, super jazzed about going out when, because I know stuff like that's going to happen. I'm like, just ask, you know? And I always have on a bandana or a hat or something, so we were walking around, um, we were walking around Walmart on Saturday. I go to Saturday, I go to Walmart every Saturday with my mom. You know, we go to a different one than the one she works at because she doesn't want people to see what she's buying. I was like, you don't want people to know you're buying parsley again? What are you using all of this parsley for, mom? So, we're, like, walking around, and, like, there's somebody staring at me, and my mom's like, you know, they probably think you have cancer. And I was like, oh, well, thank you for saying that, first of all. Um, also, very thankful I don't have cancer, but also 
like, wouldn't that give you more of a reason not to stare at somebody? She's like, well, you got that bandana on your head. And I was like, yeah, my lack of hair is a mess. I literally rolled out of bed this morning and put a bandana on and walked out the house. I still have my pajama pants on. And she's like, well, that's probably what they think. And I was like, okay, can we not, Mom? Can we just, like, move on from this? Because, yeah, I don't want to think about that. I said, you really think that people think that I am walking around Walmart eating a can of Pringles? Because you need snacks when you're walking around Walmart, if only to stop people from talking to you. You really think I'm walking around Walmart eating some uh, salt and vinegar Pringles here, getting my chemotherapy on the go? I said, I don't think they do that. I don't think that's a thing. But then, you know, I didn't know walking around antibiotics were a thing either. So, okay, I am going to take a break because I can't breathe and I need something to drink and my camera's dying and my phone's probably dead. So maybe you didn't get to hear any of that story and I'm very upset, but I will be right back. Oh, look at these together. Oh, I don't like that. Oh. I, don't like, I like these together. I like these together and then we put these on here. It's like Beetlejuice if he was a drag queen. Alright, I will be back in a minute. Well, I will be back in like three hours, but you guys don't know what time it is. So, see you in a second. Alright, and we are back. And as you can see, there's stuff everywhere. Because I'm trying to, like, get things together and do things and while I was looking for things to wrap, I was like, oh wait, I forgot I have all that stuff in those bags. And stuff. So, I have three girls on my Christmas list. They are all sea girls too, which I just realized that. It is my friend Michelle's daughters, Clara. I knew her name, I'm just, I'm brain farty. Um, Clara and Corinne. Clara is 10, and Corinne is a psycho. Um, I don't know how old she is. She's crazy. And Camille is like six or seven, I don't know. But I saw these bags, they were in my mom's department. I know I mentioned it before, my mom's a manager at Walmart of uh, Department 19. I think it's 19. Pretty sure it's 19. She is lingerie and accessories. So, she has a lot of stuff like this, like these beach bags that go on clearance. I think I cut the, the price off of that one. So, I go there pretty much every day. To Walmart, not to like, oh, let me go to Walmart and shop because I have a, all the money in the world and I can do that. I go to get a couple things because I don't keep food in my house. I don't know, I probably haven't mentioned that before because as I say that, it sounds incredibly weird. I don't keep food in my house because I would eat it all, so I have to go grocery shopping like every day, which not ideal. I mean, I do keep some food in my house, but not, like, everything, because I really would just, you know, have a breakfast, late breakfast, pre-lunch, lunch, late lunch, tea, dinner, late dinner, midnight snack, 4 a.m. snack, and then breakfast again. So, I'm always in there, and she's always like, hey, this is going to go on clearance. I'm marking it now if you want. And I'm always like, what am I going to do with that? Let me try to adjust something. Well, maybe. Okay. What am I going to do with that? But it's usually something like this where I'm like, perfect. Christmas present. Whatever. Um, where am I going with this? So, yeah, I found these this summer. Oh, it was like fall, I guess, when, I, when they finally went on clearance. Because they were... Wait, I just saw the tag and I threw it away. So I can't even tell you how much they were. I think they were $10 originally. They went down to... They went down to 5 and I was still like, nope, that's too much. And then they went down to one. And when they were one dollar, they had three left. I got two rainbows for Michelle's kids because God forbid they have two different things. And I got the, uh, what is this? A watermelon? I got the watermelon for 
Camille because she's just, she's a good girl. She likes everything. She's very grateful. So I went around my shop inside my house and picked out some stuff that I can put in these things instead of wrapping, which that's good. Because I bought, I bought like a lot of little stuff that's for sale over the year, you know, throughout the year. And it's like a stocking, like a little stocking stuff or stuff. Stocking stuff or stuff. So let's do Camille. Let's see what she has. I have her a butterfly hair extension. My eyes are so small. My lights are like crazy. Butterfly hair extension. Um, Easter? Probably 10 cents, I would imagine. A Barbie watercoloring tablet. Um, apologies in advance to uh, Stephanie because that's probably going to be a pain to clean, but not my kid. A luxury lavender and coconut, coconut fizzer bar. Oh, wait, a scratch and sniff? No. Oh, that's. Smells like Lysol. She'll like that. Um, this is a. I don't know that a child needs body spray or lotion, but I mean, maybe. It's, I guess. I bought it for the bag. I know kids don't care about prices, but I just think that's tacky. So she gets a bag inside her bag. Also, Christmas socks. Wait, do I, is that, are they going to come apart if I cut the little thing? Maybe, but it'll be inside of there. These were 74 cents. I don't think I paid that for them. They are bears. Okay, you can kind of see the stuff over here. Um, I have a, I have two ornaments and a star. The ornaments look a little more complicated. I mean, the stars look a little more complicated just because they're smaller pieces, but they're small pieces in the ornament too. So I'm gonna give. I guess it really doesn't matter because if one of them can't do it, Kalara will do it, and if. Camille can't do it. Her brother will do it. So, this is going to fit. Oh, please fit. Don't be like this. Oh, Lord. You know what? I am not the one. Not <laughs> oh, oh, man. Can that come off? And that's not gonna zip anyway. Oh my god. Come on. Alright. So there we go. Ornament, socks, lotions, scissor bars, luxury women don't scissor bars. So that's for her. And there's nothing breakable in there, so I have to pretty much throw it anywhere. Alright, these things are gonna be an issue. I'm gonna put this one in first. This will be for oh see now. That Clara and Corinne are going to have the same thing, but whatever. So, yeah, I'm just going to fill these up. Yeah, I think if I put this in first, it... I didn't want to just have a sticky sticker. Yeah, this thing has to come off regardless. So, I am back, obviously, after all that... I'm back. I eat a giant bowl of grits because I'm a grown adult and you can't tell me what to do. Also, I had a steak that was about to go bad. You know, I bought a steak for not dying last week or whatever it was. And it had like another day on and I was like, oh, I don't want this steak. Oh, like, I, like I want a steak, but I don't want to eat a steak for lunch, you know? So I threw that in the freezer. I took a nap. Which was tumultuous. Only because I was like, I kinda, I kinda wanna take a nap, I kinda wanna do something else, but at the same time, I'm just like exhausted all the time. So, I took a nap. This, I think Corinne's really gonna like, cause it's a, it's a Trolls soap and scrub. That's that, she wears her hair like this one, and my friend lets her do it for some reason, even though she looks ridiculous. 
And I tell her, I, tell, I say, Corinne, you look ridiculous. And she says, you can't tell me what to do. You're not my real dad. And I'm like, well, if I was, things would be different. This is not going to fit in here. Oh, but it's not going to close. You know what, do they have to close? Probably, huh? Um, I know these earmuffs are not going to fit. Wait, did she get frozen? I don't know. I'm going to stick that in there. So, alright, I'll wrap this separately, I guess. Oh, what a little pain. What a pain Corinne is. Are these going to fit now? Yes, and it's a price tag off, yes. And this thing, it looks broken, but I think it's just, it just came undone and I can't get it back together. Wait, no, she doesn't get Santa Claus earmuffs and a Santa Claus toy. She gets Santa Claus earmuffs and a snowman toy. Okay, so Corinne has to go. And Corinne's not going to give me anything because she's six. So I love Christmas, if that's not obvious yet. And one of my favorite memories of Christmas is when we were little, we would get up on Christmas morning. We weren't like that family that got up like super early, like not like running down the stairs. I mean, maybe when I was younger and I just don't remember it, but not like, listen, you bags, I am not having it today. I'm tired. Uh, we didn't get up like super early. These are cute, huh? Isn't it cute to get the bag and then they get all the junk in it and I don't have to deal with it? But none of this makes a mess, so they shouldn't yell at me too much. So we would not get up super early, but you know, we would get up. It was me, my two sisters, and my parents. You know, while they're still married, before my mom was like, get the hell out of my house. Good for her. So we would get up go downstairs and my mom would usually like put biscuits in the oven or cinnamon rolls or something and we'd all go in the you know do that real quick because you can't you can't like make a kid wait on Christmas morning so she would do that and we would go and open presents and I grew up very fortunate like I'm not I have no like aspersions about oh my god my childhood so terrible I mean my childhood was terrible but it wasn't because I wanted for anything you know, it's just because my mom married wrong. Um, more than anybody needs to know. So, you know, we get up, do a Christmas thing, get all our presents, and it was fun. Like, that was fun. But around 10 o'clock in the morning, my grandparents would show up. And my grandpa, all his life, I'm sure he had a, as long as I can remember at least, while he was alive, he always drove... A huge Cadillac. Huge Cadillac. And my grandparents would come down the street. Like, we would be outside. It didn't matter how cold it was. We would be outside waiting for my grandparents to come down the street. Because my grandma, bless her heart, she is no longer with us. My grandpa isn't either. But she, um, I don't know if it's that she was like lazy and didn't want to shop. Or she just didn't like shopping. But remember the Sears toy book? Remember how the kids today, kids today will never know what it was like when that toy book finally came in the mail, all right? Like, if you're a kid and you're watching this, first of all, you shouldn't be because it just spent like an hour and a half talking about my toes falling off. But if your parents are letting you watch this, good. If not, it's not for you. I don't know about all of these new YouTube rules and I don't care because... This content is not for you. But you know, if your parents watch and you sitting there aggravating in the background while they're trying to relax and watch me wrap presents, whatever. Kids today will never know the joy of that book coming in the mail in like September. So every year it would come and we would get one and my grandma would get one. And inevitably we had two at my house because we would have the one we got and the one my grandma gave us. And we all took turns, we all went through it, and we put our name next to whatever we wanted. We circled it, we picked out a size, we picked out a color, whatever it was. The Sears toy book. I think they had clothes in there. I think it was just toys. Like, it was bomb. Um, it was like Amazon in the catalog when you were a kid. Y'all are just waiting for me to rip one of these zippers off. I know it. So, I would go through. 
and I would find all the toys I wanted, and I'm not struggling with that anymore. I would find all the toys I wanted. Oh my god, I guess I'm still struggling with this a little bit. Find all the toys I wanted, put my name next to them, circle them, and then on Christmas morning, um, the toys would show up. And they would show up in the back of my grandpa's Cadillac and we would be outside waiting. Not so much my older sister because she was, she's, I don't know what, she's like 87 years old, but no, she's not that old. She's just older than me. Like, like not, she's like seven years older than me. So probably when it was like a big deal for me, she was like, I'm a cool teenager. I listen to new kids on the block. So, I hope she's not watching this. I'm going to tell her not to watch this. So, we open up the, oh, that's falling. Okay. Well, it can because it has a bird in it. So, we would open up the back of the trunk. And it was like a big Cadillac. It wasn't, well, I guess back then all they really had was big Cadillac. It's not like they had little coupes or SUVs or anything. It was a big, big Cadillac. And the whole trunk would be filled with presents. And it was like, it was like something you see in one of those movies. And I just realized I forgot to put something in the bags. It was like something you see in one of those like movies where like, you know, Richie, oh, did I break this already? Richie Rich's Christmas or something where all the, I mean, it was just so many, oh, it's so many toys. Like there was, there was a toy for every scrunchie that's on my table right now. Let me tell you all that. In a second. But it was like so important to me. Not just because it was presents, but because, like, we usually had a Christmas Eve party and my grandparents would leave and then they would come back the next morning and they would stay for Christmas dinner and it was just, it was so, it was such a nice memory. Okay, if you're looking for scrunchies, these were $10 for 60 of them on Amazon. Um, I bought them for my sister, who I just was talking about. She's probably still at home listening to Good Will, Good Will, New Kids on the Block. But she doesn't need all these, but she will, like, I want to make sure I give her, like, the neutrals. Maybe a red for Christmas. These are tight. I don't even know if that's going to get... My sister has so much hair, I hate her. Um, so, yeah, like, just that, like, togetherness. And, I mean, when you're a kid, like, it is about the presents. I'm sorry. Like, you don't get the whole thing of togetherness with, like, being with your family. But it was just so nice. Camille. Well, Stephanie likes purple. So I'm assuming Camille also likes purple because why not? I'll have to give Clara a pink and I'll give them each two because I don't think my sister would wear two. And then Corinne is not very girly, but I don't know. Anyway, um, so yeah, ever since then I have been very like super into Christmas, especially after my parents got divorced and the Christmas parties weren't the same, after my grandpa died and then my grand my parents got divorced and the parties weren't the same and, you know, Christmas morning wasn't the same. Business, what are you doing, baby? That dog. So, pretty much since I was a kid and, well, since like, business, Stop, come on, lay in your bed. I buy you that bed to not lay in it. Go to sleep. Pretty much since I've been a teenager, I've been trying to like recapture that magic of how those Christmas mornings were. And I try, I really, I really try. Okay, so my sister can have the rest of these. I try, I really try. It's just, it's like, I don't know. Like I love giving presents and I love wrapping presents, and I love picking out presents. I'm like, you know, I just, I did just put a bunch of crap in those bags because I had, to, oh, here's all the other for my sister. She's gonna be so happy, but she'll probably complain because it's too many because that's what she does. So, like, I like that, and every year I try to find that again, and. Every year I try to find that again, and it just, it seems like every year it just gets a little further away. Like, people, it gets harder, and my grandma died two years ago, and, you know, I haven't, I haven't really seen her much since after the hurricane when I moved to Florida. I moved back, and she was living somewhere else with my aunt. It's just, 
I want that Christmas I had when I was a kid, and I do not think it's coming back. But, I can try. So this is Mom. That was a lot more depressing than I needed it to be. I love Christmas! We do a big Christmas breakfast at my mom's house, because that's what we did when we were in Florida. My mom was living in Florida, I went there after the hurricane. My sisters came back. I had to stay because, you know. I don't really know why. Well, I do know why, but it's just... They had people waiting back here for them, and I did not, so... Whatever. So we started this Christmas tradition of breakfast. And it's, you know, we're not kids anymore, so having the breakfast, you know, opening the presents is not that big of a deal anymore because, especially with me, it's like, I don't get to ask for things I want for Christmas. You know, and I'm like, oh, what do you want for Christmas? And I'm like, well, my coffee pot's been broken, so I need a new coffee maker, and um, I need uh, this, and I need that, and it, I don't I don't ever get what I want because I always need stuff because I don't have stuff. And when stuff breaks, I'm just like, okay, well, that's broken now. Like, my dryer's been broken for, like, six years. I'm still waiting for my mom to, like, shove a dryer underneath the Christmas tree. But yeah, it's it's not the same. You know, we do the, we do the breakfast, we open presents, and at some point I was like, let's do this thing where we, what am I doing here? I, I talked myself into confusion. Let's do this thing where, you know, we start off somewhere. It doesn't... Is it fireworks? Business! Shh. You know you're not allowed to bark. Only if people are trying to break in and kill us. They're not going to break in and steal anything. Okay, that's enough. Oh my god, y'all, this dog. He will bark at a cricket fart. So... I started this tradition when we were by my mom's house that we you know we're all sitting around everybody everybody's sitting around in her living room and you have to go one at a time. So it's like my sister will go and she'll open a present from whoever and then I'll go and then my mom will go and then Carl will go and my other sister used to go but she doesn't talk to us anymore because oh, that's not a story for you to visit. Um I'll just leave that out of there. She doesn't come over anymore, which Whatever. She was the easiest to buy for, too, because she was garbage. Um, yeah, so I started this thing where we go around and everybody everybody takes a turn, and it makes it last a little bit longer. You know, that Christmas morning feeling? And so I eventually realized that, hey, you know, the more presents there are to open, the longer this is going to take. Much to the chagrin of some people, I am sure, but... I mean, can I be faulted for wanting to spend time with my family on Christmas and, like, have it kind of be like it used to be when I didn't have to worry about whether or not my dryer worked and how the hell I'm going to... Business! Stop! How, how the hell I'm going to fix my car and how long I'm going to be on antibiotics. Like, I would... If I could have that Christmas again... I would not, I, I, w I wouldn't care about the presence in my grandparents' Cadillac, you know? And now I am super depressed. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Comment, like, and subscribe. Watch my Patreon where I steal your money for no reason because I'm a YouTuber. That's what you're supposed to do. But yeah, so... That's why Christmas is important to me. And I think, until I have my own family, which, I mean, let's be realistic, that's probably not going to happen for me. Until I have my own family, I'm not going to get that again. Like, that magic is... It's just not there anymore.
but you know what, I can try my best, and I can pick out presents that I think people will like, and I can wrap them magnificently with you guys, and I can hope for the best, because if I stopped hoping for the best, oof, things would get real, real grim. You know, my Walmart, not my Walmart, my Goodwill. I know I've talked about this before, about how obnoxious my Goodwill prices are. They started going down on their prices. Why is this so fucking on the sides? Am I being, like, way too particular about this? I mean, my mom will care. My sister won't even... She'll rip it open and not even look at what it is before she moves on. And Carl, he don't know where he's at most of the time, so... Um... My goodwill went down on the prices, which still, I'm like, what's going on? I'm grasping it. What's going on? I don't understand. Did I wrap my mom's sweatshirt? Possibly. This is, if you don't start barking, if you don't stop barking at anything, at, ugh. see, that's why he keeps barking, because he's like, what are you talking about, crazy person? If you don't quit barking at nothing, I'm going to have to come over there and give you a treat, make you stop. So my Goodwill went down on the prices, so I've been going more lately when I can, because I can make it to Goodwill, and sometimes I can make it back in my car, but not really. And there's still not a lot of great stuff. I don't know, like, I think it's, like, there's never anything really cool because there's nothing old where I live anymore because everything got thrown away after the hurricane. So there's never, like, anything really cool, but you're like, there's stuff there where I'm like, why did somebody give this away? Why didn't they just chalk paint it and decoupage it? But, you know, maybe people don't do that. Maybe that's not, like, what people think of to do when their stuff gets old. I'm tired of this stripe right now. I'm going to use this polka dot. But I was in there, and I don't know if it's New Orleans. I'm assuming it probably... Ugh. I hate to say that I'm assuming it probably isn't, but it probably is. Um, where people walk around and loudly talk on their cell phones on speakerphone, like, it's no big deal. Like, I don't think I've ever had a conversation on the phone where I want, like, an audience of strangers to be privy to it. Not that I'm ever, like, talking about anything crazy. Like, my ties with Russia or anything like that. But it's like, why are you walking around like everybody can hear you? Everybody's nosy, so everybody's listening. So, for whatever reason, Goodwill is the worst. Like, you can go in there. You don't have any money to go to the movies. You don't have any money for date night. Just go there and walk around, and you will be entertained. Let me tell you. A couple of weeks ago, before the prices went down, I'm in Goodwill. And I am looking for a thrift store makeover project. And there is a woman in there. There's a woman in there, and she's walking around on her phone. She's, like, leaning on the basket. But she's got so much stuff. She's got so much stuff. I was like, this woman must be a secret millionaire, because there's no way anybody could afford the stuff in this Goodwill. That much stuff, because it's going to the price. So she's on the phone, and she's talking to this other woman. And she dressed up nice. Might have been Sunday. Was she at... Ch she was... Like, usually when I see somebody dressed up nice, I'm like, oh, and it's Sunday. I'm like, oh, they came from church to go to the Goodwill to do some shopping. So she's, like, dressed nice, and she's talking to this other woman on the phone. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'm at the Goodwill, seeing what they got here. Got some things for the, ch for the children. Got some of this. Got some of that. So going on and on, talking. Just, you know, normal conversation. Nothing really really um interesting but like i'm i'm intrigued because whenever i find somebody like walking around on the phone i'm like okay good great now i have to follow them three hours to see what they're talking about so and in walmart too like people like six o'clock in the morning i'm like who are you talking to at six o'clock in the morning when i'm trying to buy eggplants like oh my god i love eggplant um so She's walking around, and she's talking, and I'm just like, you know, not eavesdropping, because that's not polite, but, you know, definitely eavesdropping. 
she's walking around and the woman on the phone is like, oh, you know, Curtis came over yesterday to help me get down a gumbo pot because I got to make gumbo. And I'm like, oh my God, gumbo sounds so good. Um, actually, gumbo does sound really good. I think I have some in my freezer. So I am like just all over the place. Hope you guys like rambling nonsense. Nobody's watching this video anymore. Y'all clicked off when I started talking about my toes falling off. Um, she's on the phone. And, you know, oh, Kurt said to come over and get down the gumbo pod. You know, I'm getting too old to go up and down them steps. And the woman's like, yes, I know, I know. So they just, you know, random BS. Back and forth, gumbo pot. They're both too old to do anything. So she says, well, she says, she says, well, the woman on the phone says, well, tell me, what has my brother-in-law been up to? And I'm like, okay, well, they must be sisters. Or, yeah, I mean, that's the only way they would be like, if the woman on the phone was the woman in Goodwill's sister-in-law. Oh, she's asking about the brother. I don't know. I don't know how they were related. They might not have been related. So she says, how's my brother-in-law doing? And she said, oh... I went up to see him the other day, you know. They only let you in there so many days, and, um, and I'm just thinking, oh, she went to go visit him. That's nice. Nice family get together or something. She's like, they only let you have so many days, and, you know, if he acts up in there, he don't get to have his visiting days. And I was like, wait a minute. Sis, now I'm intrigued. Oh, they don't get to have his visiting days. And she says, oh, I know the woman in the way. Oh, I know it, I know it. Oh, one of them. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who was who. I just, I've told this story like a thousand times. But I think you guys should hear it too. Because it's disturbing and funny. To me, at least. So she says, um, you know, he acts up. He acts up and they don't let him, they don't let him have his visit in time. And I'm like, he's definitely in prison, or maybe he's, like, in a hospital or something, but no, he's in prison, like, I'm pretty sure. So, she says, he just gets into trouble with them boys, them other boys in there, you know, they start with him, it ain't his fault. And I'm like, it's probably not his fault. These boys in this prison, messing with this man who just wants to see his wife or his sister, whoever this person is. So she says, yeah... You know, once they beat him in a shower with that pipe, he ain't been the same since. And I, like, stopped in my tracks, and I was like, who got piped in a shower? Tell me everything. So, they're going back and forth. I think my sister is with me. I might have been, I don't even know. Like, I'm just like, I am so invested in these people's stories. She's like, oh, yeah, he got piped in a shower. He ain't been the same since. And I was like, you know what? If somebody piped me in a shower, I probably wouldn't be the same either. But I hope he's home for Christmas. Because that would be nice. I live in a weird place, y'all. Another time. That's another Goodwill story. Another time. I'm in Goodwill. I am looking for something to make over because that's all I go to Goodwill for. Occasionally I buy a pair of pants. Not really, though. Uh, my mom goes, and she's like, I need to buy these pants. My mom will spend, like, seven hours going through every every pair of pants in the store and then being like, I don't see anything I like. And I'm like, you just spent, like, all day. Go like, we have, we, we can't do anything else today because you spent all day going through pants at Goodwill and you found nothing. Like, you, I don't care. You have to buy something. So, I'm in there. And I buy the houseware stuff because I don't... Like, I go by the books, I go by the houseware, I go by the furniture, and that's it. Unless I'm making pumpkins, then I go by the sweaters. So I'm in there, and there is a woman in there with her brother, father, friend, husband, boyfriend, um, uncle? I don't know. I can't tell. So she's in there, and they are, um, they're a little rough. Like, they are, they have been road wet and put up hard, or whatever, the, but everybody corrected me in the comments. They have been road hard and put up wet. So, of course, I'm interested. What is going on? So, she's looking at, like, the dishes and stuff. And 
he is like i'm keeping an eye on them first of all because i'm like these people are fascinating but also like oh my god these people are gonna go crazy and kill everybody in any second you know it was like the, that kind of situation so i'm like watching and i'm you know trying to figure out what's going on she's like looking at dishes and stuff and she's picking them up and she seems a little bit more um stable than the other guy who i, I mean he was i'm assuming he was high because i mean come on that's where i live so she's looking at stuff he's looking at stuff he's like all like he's going between the books and the furniture and uh, the clothes and he's all over the place and i'm still like digging through this one giant blue bin because they love doing that to me they're like let's put all the stuff in a giant blue bin and just see what happens you know what happens i fall in head first and then i sue you and then i get whatever i want from goodwill for free so she's like looking at the dishes and he comes over out of nowhere i don't even know where he came from he is holding one of these giant tinsel lawn animals. My friend Michelle has a menagerie. Um, not my thing. I'm like, why, why do you why do you need a, a flamingo in your yard for Christmas? Why? What is that? I don't know. Just what's your theme? What's your theme, Beverly? So my friend Michelle, she has like a I don't know. It's not even like a manger deal. It's just like a bunch of random animals. But she's weird. Um. So, he comes out of nowhere, and he's holding one of these animals. It's all messed up, because it's Goodwill, and everything and I Goodwill is messed up. I get so angry when I see people, they're like, let's go to Goodwill, and they, like, find the most amazing things. And they're like, oh, I'm just gonna have to give this a polish, and then I can, like, put my newborn baby on it, because it's so nice and clean. And I'm like, wow! I literally had to spray everything down with bleach after buying it from Goodwill, and you can just stick a baby on it. So he comes over, he's got this sparkly pink light-up pig. Its head is off, which maybe that's how it came in the box. It was in the box, kinda, but also wasn't, because I'm assuming those things don't come out of the box together and you have to, like, open them up, or I don't know. I'll ask Michelle. Um, he's got this pig. Giant pink sparkly, not like super giant, but like, it was a, it was a giant pig, like, okay. And it, was, it wasn't around Christmas, but they, like, put all their Christmas stuff out in October, and now it's all gone, and it's just, like, random crap. So he's got this giant pig. How many times am I going to say that? And he says, babe, 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 babe. And she finally turns around, and she's like, what? It's like, babe, I found it. Now, at that moment, <laughs> I am wondering... Did he go to Goodwill specifically to buy a giant pink sparkly Christmas pig? Or he was looking for a gift? I mean, like, I'm just like, it's running through my head. I'm just, I am like straight out just staring at these people right now. I'm just, I'm not even looking for anything. I'm just like staring at them. I got my phone out. I'm about to take a, you know, a Snapchat. I don't know how to use Snapchat, but you know, if I did, I probably would. So I'm just like enamored with these people. And he's like, babe, I found it. And she's like... What is it? And I'm like, what is it? It's a giant pink sparkly Christmas pig. Like, I want to butt into this conversation so bad. He's like, I just found it, babe. It's awesome. She says, how much is it? And of course, because it's Goodwill, before they change the prices, he's like, I don't know, it's like $19.99. She says, we can't afford it. And I was like, oh, no. I was like, he really wants that giant pink sparkly Christmas pig. We can't afford it. And he, he's like, no, we got to get it. And she's like, we can't afford it. And like, she's like, she's getting testy. And I'm like, okay, calm down. All right, calm down, ma'am. This is serious. He's like, but we need it for the house. And I'm like, all right, we need it for the house. And she's like, we don't need it for the house. We need dishes to eat food on because we don't have any dishes. And I'm like, oh, she needs dishes. Maybe she just moved into this house. Is this Clara's? I hope so. Well, she's going to be getting something at somebody else's. Oh, well, she'll love it. No, she'll complain about it and cry and scream. And I'll be like, oh, my God. Check your privilege at the door. So she's like, we can't afford it. We need to get dishes so we can eat food. Or whatever. <laughs> she says something like that. And I'm like, yeah, that must have been Clara's. I'm like, oh, man, this book. What is with the fireworks? It is the Sunday before Thanksgiving. What are you... Oh, there's a Saints game on. People are so stupid. So, 
she's like, we can't afford that. And he's like, I need it. I need this bag. This is all I've ever wanted my whole life. Quit being so mean about everything. So they're just like in this lockdown. Like he is not leaving without this pig. Like I'm totally team him. I'm totally team meth head or whatever, whatever he was on. He looked like a kid I went to high school with. I went to elementary school with. Just like if things went really wrong at some point. All right. You know what I mean? Live your life the way you want. I'm not judging you. A little bit I am, but. So she's like, we can't afford the pig. We need dishes so we can eat on. And he said, but I want it. She said, well, if you want the pig, we can't afford to eat dinner tonight. And he's like, I would rather not eat dinner than go home without this pig. And I was like, this guy is so passionate about this pig of his. If I had money, I would buy it for him. And he could go home, buy dinner, eat on his new dishes with his pig. And I was like, dude, you need to tell this girl it's over. Like, just tell her you're done. Tell her you don't want to move in with her or... Whatever's going on, I assume they moved into a nice new house, and they needed dishes, and he needed this Christmas pig. But I didn't, I didn't follow it after that. It was, it got to be too much. I became too emotionally invested in what was going on. So I came home, and I posted about it on Instagram, and I, like, told everybody, like, the whole, this whole saga. And then, next time I'm in Dollar, not Dollar Tree, the next time I'm in Walmart, not what? Wait, hold on. <sighs> Alright, maybe now my brain will get right. The next time I'm in Goodwill, the pig is still there. So, I'm guessing the girlfriend, sister, mom, niece, aunt, whoever, she went out in the end. And they went home with dishes, and they stopped on the way home to get something to eat on the dishes. But I was, I was invested. I was like, this poor guy, all he wants is this pig that doesn't have a head. It's like head sideways. That would be so nice for him to go home and have that pig, but no. Oh, why did I go all over the place like that? Is this from Michelle? Oh, she won't complain too much about it being impossible to open. Hopefully she also won't notice that I definitely did not send her this. Yeah, that's what happens where I live. I don't know what happens where you guys live, but I hope it's as fun as, like, my life. This is a bone folder. You know what? I was going to, like, make this video so nice, and it was going to be so cool to teach you guys how I'm so anal about wrapping presents and why I'm using hot glue, but, you know what? I'm just going to have to do a separate video. That's not me rambling about my toes and getting piped in the prison yard and sparkly pink Christmas pigs. This will just be like, you know, a fun day we're spending together. Which is great because my mom had to work today and I'm stuck at home because my car keeps catching on fire. Go fund me link in the uh, description there if anybody's interested. Want to give me a little tip. Um, so yeah, I can talk to you guys and get this done. Because if I don't have anybody to talk to... I don't have any Christmas movies to watch, and I'm too lazy to go get my laptop out the other room to watch Christmas movies while I'm doing this. We're just going to hit, like, dead stop here. This is going to be done. So. Jen, you better not be watching this because I'm going to talk about you. I have a handicapped sister. She is... Oh, I think she's like 45. I don't know how old she is. Um, I just think she's like 100 because she's always wearing my grandma's clothes for some reason. So she doesn't drive. She doesn't have the um, reflexes to drive. So I go and get her. I try to go every day to go get her. Um... If I have something to do, I'll, you know, I'll tell, you know, I'm probably not going to call you tomorrow. And she's fine with that because she likes staying home and watch. Oh my God, who is this for? Michelle. She likes staying home and like hanging out. She's got no problem. Like, being, like I can't, I can't be at home all the day, all the time with this dog. Like, 
no. One of us is going to end up killing the other one. She's finally just hanging out at home. So what we do is I will go pick her up and we will go to Dollar Tree because she likes to go to Dollar Tree and I like to go to Dollar Tree and we like to see Miss Carol at Dollar Tree. What if my video blew up so much that Carol from Dollar Tree was watching? Oh my god, what if the guy with the pig ends up watching this? You know, when YouTube finally remonetizes me, guy with the pig, if you're watching this, DM me on Instagram and I will send you as many pigs as you want. Which is two, because that's all I'm sending. So I go and get my sister all the time. And we come home and we watch movies. We will watch... I'm usually working on something. Is this One of these is for the bigger box and one of these is for the smaller box. And they are both the same size. How did that happen? Are they both the same size? No, this one's bigger. Um, she'll come over and we'll watch a movie, and it's usually while I am working on part of a project that I'm going to film for you guys. So I'll be, you know, putting together ruffles for a wreath or something like that. And we will pick a movie after, like, much deliberation about what we're going to pick. Like, because she's not going to... She doesn't want to watch anything with subtitles, which... I don't watch movies with subtitles, not because, like, I do sometimes, but it's not because I can't, it's because I am literally never just doing one thing, and if I'm watching movies with subtitles, I have to watch and read. Like, I can watch, and I can, I can listen and do something, but, like, I need to read, and then I can't, you know, do whatever crafty crap I'm doing. So, during Halloween, we always watch... I used to do this thing with 31 Days and 31 Horror Movies. I would watch 31 horror movies. Not specifically Halloween movies, just horror movies during Halloween. And it was like a tradition for so long. And I didn't I didn't do it this year. Just be I don't know why I didn't do it. I was just like, I I don't feel like it. It gets hard after a while when you watch. Because I love I love horror movies. It gets hard after a while to like find new stuff and you know. So every time we watch a movie, my sister, when it's over, it doesn't matter what movie it is, she will find something that doesn't make any sense to her. Like, things that you, that, you know, the movie doesn't lend itself to explaining. Like, if you're watching a science fiction movie, do I have to explain to you why they traveled for a hundred years, but they're all still young while they were in hypersleep? Like, that's something you're just like, I don't need an explanation of that, but she does. Which, that's fine. Whatever. But <laughs> she gets, like, so, like, so into it. Like, just so, like, well, that doesn't make any sense. And it's all, it's never while we're watching the movie. It's always afterwards. She's like, you know what I didn't understand? If Harry Potter was a wizard, why didn't he just magic himself a better house? <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, if he did that, then, you know, he wouldn't have this adversity. And I guess she doesn't. Like, she gets that, but at the same time, she's like, that's stupid. Why don't he just give himself a new house? And I'm like, well, you know what? You've, and she's got a lot of valid points. Let me tell y'all. She's got some very valid points when it comes to movies. But she'll say things like, you, her favorite thing is, you know what? I don't understand. And I'm like, oh, God, here it comes. She's going to say something that I'm going to try to explain. You know what? I don't understand. Why are the aliens from Aliens such jerks? But all E.T. wanted to do was to call home. And I'm like, well, I, I, um, I, um, um. They weren't the same kind of alien? What, how many different kinds are there? I'm like, Jen, it's not real. And she's like, but I know that. But if it was real, how many would they be? And I was like, a lot. Like, as many different animals as there are. Well, how many different animals are there? And I'm like, a lot, Jen. A lot of animals. But the, um... We watch movies. We keep watching movies and, like, not finishing them. And then I'll watch them later. And she'll be like, what happened in that stupid movie about that cat we were watching? That cat that could talk. Why could that cat talk? And I'm like, it was the magic cat. It was Harry Potter's magic cat. And he was also an alien. So I'll, like, finish the movie afterwards because she she likes to be home for, like, 11. Because her husband comes home from work at noon. So she likes to be home and do her wife stuff. Like, making tea. She's always making tea. I was making tea and cleaning her bathroom. Like, what's going on with that? This is baggy. I don't like that. Whatever. 
I'm carrying less. This, this, this wrapping paper is really nice, but it is killing my eyeballs. So, okay, the whole point of this is my sister's usually always with me. And my car is messed up. I mean, we got, we got that already. This is going to bug me, you guys. Oh, Michelle. I don't think you've ever wrapped a single present you've given me, and now I'm going through all this trouble for you. You're not worth it. You don't even brush your hair. So, my sister is always with me, and my car is broken. So, I pick her up the other day, and she knows my car is broken. But I'm like, listen, Eddie, who is my mechanic neighbor, he said I could go places. Can't, like, you know, drive to Alabama. But why would I want to? Oh, my God. Um... No offense to Alabama people, but what's there? We used to have a really nice shoe store there. We used to go to when I was a kid because we would go to different states to buy shoes. That's how privileged I was. So, and like, you know, my car doesn't work. I'm trying to get it fixed. Turns out my, my neighbor can't fix it because something crazy is going on. I don't, I don't know. I don't even care. I'm just like, you know what? As long as it doesn't explode. So I tell my sister, you know, oh, Eddie said it's fine to take the car and to go do things as long as it doesn't get too hot. You know, I fill it up with water and blah, 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 and whatever. And she's like, well, okay. Because she's, like, nervous about being in the car. Because I'm, I'm not the greatest driver already. Um, so I pick her up, go to Dollar Tree, we come home. I said, okay, Jen, before we leave, we have to put water in the car. So we're going to Big Lots and where are we going? We're going to We're going to Big Lots. And we went to Big Lots, car was fine. We go we leave there and I'm like, the car is fine. Like we did such a good job with this water gen. Like we are basically mechanics. Like we could open up our own shop. We could get coveralls. You know you could have like a cool John Travolta grease haircut. I don't know. I'll get a wig. So we go to Big Lots. Car's fine. I'm like, this water thing, perfect. I don't even need to get this car fixed. That's how good this is. Where is that sweatshirt? Oh, it's over here, of course. We don't even need to get this car. Like, I'm so like, I'm like, oh, I thought it was like the end of the world. But it's not because it's just, this is the last, last present, guys, because I am... I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. No, the car's fixed. It's fine. It's perfect. We won't have to worry about this. I can la I can stop stressing about this. She's like, oh yeah, that's super good that it's fixed. And I'm like, yeah, Jen, I know. Like, it's awesome. So I'm feeling confident in my car, even though my mechanic friend, who knows more than me about cars, because he is a mechanic friend, tells me not to go too many places and not to go too far and to always have water. Oh, wait, I put that on the wrong side. Crap. So... Let me just stick my thumb in the air. That's fine. But, you know, I know better than him because I'm me. And I know better than everyone, apparently. So, we leave Big Lots and I'm like, let's go to Goodwill. And then we go to Goodwill and I'm like, let's go to Dollar General. And she's like, well, okay, if you think your car can handle that. And then I'm like, I think it can, Jen. Don't worry about it. I was like, I am not going to let anything bad happen to you. So, we go... To Goodwill, car is fine. We go to Dollar General, car is fine. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna bring you home because I'm gonna go home and eat lunch and take my nap and change because I was still hooked up to my antibiotics at this time because I picked her up early. I was already hooked up. I'm still hooked up. It's like 10 o'clock at this point. I should have unhooked like 45 minutes ago, but I'm still hooked up. So I'm driving her home, and as I'm driving her home, I see the little gauge that I'm supposed to be watching. It just keeps to the middle and then towards the H, which I'm supposed to be watching out for. And I am watching it and I'm trying not to let her know that I'm watching it. Look at this sweater I got my mom, this sweatshirt. Instead of gifts, I'm giving everyone my opinion. She will wear that year round probably because that's what she likes to do. Give everybody her opinion. So the car is like, heating up and it is making kind of like a um, dying lamb sound like 
I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, just let me. Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, like, I know the car is going to die. At this point, I'm like, this car is going to overheat. It's just going to straight up stop. It's going to explode. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm like, just let me get across the highway because there's a highway dividing where I'm at and where I need to bring my sister. And I was like, if I can just get to the other side of the highway, just let me get to the other side of the highway because my fear is that I'm going to, the car is just going to die in the middle of the highway. And then I'm going to be holding up traffic and everybody's going to be like, oh my God, he's so stupid. Why didn't he listen to his mechanic friend? And I'm going to be like, because I thought I knew better. And I don't, obviously, I'm sorry. So we get across the highway and I'm like, whew. And her house is on the street we're at. So we're getting ready to pass her house and I have to turn down the street to get to it. She's like, just let me out here so you don't have to stop and go down the street. And I was like, good idea, Jen. So I let her out. I stay there for a second to make sure she crosses the street. And she's on her way home, and I'm like, all right, I gotta get home before, like, it goes down. So I make it about, I don't know, 15 more feet, and the car just goes up, just gone, just nothing. Didn't slow down, didn't, like, make a noise, just, like, stopped. And I am on the intersection of a busy road and a very busy road, <laughs> and I'm at the stop sign. And I am like, oh, crap. So... I'm still hooked up to the IV. This is maybe, this is like two days after I got out of the hospital. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do here? Like, why did I do this stupid thing? Why did I listen to Eddie and Jen and like literally everybody else? But no, I wanted to go to the door. So, I'm like, all right, Jen lives just around the corner. That's fine. I can walk to her house. But I can't leave my car in the middle of the street next to this stop sign. And, like, there was a bus behind me, and she was, like, looking at me, and I was like, go around. Go around. So, I called my sister back, and I'm like, hey, Jen. She's like, hey, did you get home, and could you tell me more about these aliens? And I'm like, listen, the car broke down. I'm at the stop sign. I don't know what to do. Why don't you come over here? Because you're gonna help, right? And she's like, well, I don't know what you want me to do, Alan, who is her husband. He doesn't get off at work until, you know like 20 minutes from now and I'm like okay well I need help because I at this point I think I've tried to push the car myself but I'm not supposed to be lifting more than five pounds with this arm and I am pretty sure my car weighs like two tons so I'm like I need help um so can you walk over here carefully because I'm worried about her like crossing the street so like can you carefully make your way over here and help me push this car up onto this curb because that sounds like something we're going to be able to do. So she comes over and she's like, I don't know what to do. And like the car is just, there's like plume. Like you can't, I can barely see her. It looks like we're gorillas in the mist. There's so, there's so much smoke everywhere. I can't see anything. There's people honking at me. A cop passes me. Okay. This is me with an IV sticking out of my arm into my bag. My handicapped sister who is freaking out. The car is literally on fire with smoke coming out of it. And this cop passes us by and he looks right at us. The whole time he's turning, he's just like looking at us and then he just keeps driving. And I was like, seriously, seriously, boys in blue, really? So, um, I'm like, okay, Jen, we have got to push this. I, I said, I moved a little bit. I said, we need to push it back, at least back from the stop sign because then people won't pull up to it thinking that I'm just stopped at the stop sign, right? So we try to push it back, and I'm like, oh, good, we got it. And she's like, well, that's good. And as soon as as soon as soon we take our hands off the car, it starts rolling back towards me. And I'm like, oh, no. This is a bad idea. So she's like, why is it doing that? And I was like, Jen, I need you to do something for me. And she's like, more than push your car off the street so you don't get hit. And also, tell me more about the aliens. So I'm like, I need you to get in the car. And she's like, I can't drive. And I was like, Jen, I know you can't drive. Listen, that's why I come get you every day because you can't drive. Like that is something I do for you. This is something you need to do for me. I need you to get in the car, in the driver's seat. I need you to put the car, take the car out of neutral, put it in reverse. No, the car wasn't in. Yeah, put it in. I said, put it in reverse because I couldn't I didn't know what I was doing. What was the car? The car might have been 
no, it wasn't park. I think it might have been in drive, and I was like pushing. And I was like, okay, we're gonna put the car in reverse. And I'm thinking, if it's in reverse, it's gonna be easy to push. It's not, y'all. Don't y'all know this already? Somebody's laughing at me right now. Thank you, stupid. Why do you listen to his mechanic neighbor? So I'm like, I need you to put the car in reverse, and then I'm gonna push it as far as I can, and then I'm gonna hold it with all my strength, which is basically nothing, because I've been living on cafeteria food at the hospital and I got this freaking pump attached to me. So I'm like, do you know how to put the car in park? She's like, yeah. So I said, okay. So I pushed the car as far back as I can go and it's not as far back as it needs to be, but there's at least space between the car and the stop sign so people can easily go around me. And it's kind of out of the street a little bit, but there was this big hump, I could not get it over that. So I push it back and I'm like, okay, Jen, you ready? And she's like, what do I do? And I was like, okay, I'm going to tell you. I said, put your foot on the brake. The brake is the big one that's shaped like a candy bar. She said, what kind of candy bar? And I'm like, Jen, it's like a rectangle. She said, that's two rectangles. And I said, it's not the gas. The gas is the one that looks like, and I'm trying to like, just like, what? I was like, the gas is a Pringles can. The brake is a Hershey's chocolate bar. So she's like, okay. I said, put your foot on the brake. I said, and make sure the keys <laughs> don't accidentally start the car and mow me over because I will, I will get out of the, I will crawl out from underneath this car and just smack the crap out of you. So she's like, okay. So I said, put, put, put the car, put the car, you know, put, put your foot on the brake and put it in park because that's the only way because I can't I'm trying to like tell her how to do the emergency brake and she's just like that's too much I'm like let me just put it in park and maybe it'll stay so she goes to do it and I see her and like pull the the thing towards you and then push it to pee so she does it and I know in my car you got to pull it like this and then push it all the way to the left to get it to go in park and all the way in the right to get it to go in like second gear or something there's a two I've never used it the car's like 30 years old not that old. It's 21. It's 21? What year is it? It's 21. So, she does it, but I see that she pulls it all to the way to the right. And I was like, is it in park? And she's like, I think so. But I was like, I think it's in second gear, Jen. So I let go, and of course the car starts rolling towards me again. I'm like, no, 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 no. I said, you need to push it in just like you did. You did a great job with that. But now I need you to make sure you move it all the way to the left. So she does it, and the car's in park, and... It still can't go anywhere. And like, I'm waiting for my mom to come because I called her because I don't know what to do. I was like, listen, you need to come and get me and bring me home so I can flush out this IV line before I get like septic or a staph infection or something disgusting. So she came and she had to take her car and push my car backwards with her car while Jen is just like standing in the middle of the road. And I'm like, what is she doing? Like, what is going on? And then... We went back later and it started and I got it back home and now I don't go anywhere. Often. I mean, I still, I have to go places sometimes, but there's about 17 gallons of water in the back of my car now. Okay, this is just the last thing I'm going to do because I want to see if my vision has come to life. This ribbon is so old, it's from Kmart. Do y'all even have Kmart? I know there are still some left. I love Kmart. I preferred Kmart over Walmart when I was living in Florida. Just because nobody was ever in there. It was always nice old people. Nice old Cuban old people. Yeah, this was $4.99 and it is 40 feet. I hate when they do that. Like, give me yards. I don't understand how many feet that is. Okay, I know it's like 13 and then one foot, but still. 13 yards for $5? That's not bad. And I hope you're not waiting for me to bust out my name tags because, spoiler alert, oh my god, it's everywhere. Spoiler alert, the uh, gift tags, they don't happen in this house. I've never found any that go with what I'm trying to do. And my handwriting, as you can tell, is terrible. So later on, when we're done with all of this, 
and I'm going to eat something for dinner and finish my coffee. That's going to keep me up all night, but at least I got through the story. I'm going to go back. She'll do it right now. Why not? Right here. Okay, Mom. On the back. Can you see it from there? No, you can't. So now we know. This is Mom's ornament. It's wrapped. It's ready to go. I wish I had something to put on the top, but I don't. So, yeah. Well, that was an ordeal. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you made it to the end of this video, tell me what color scrunchie you want. Because that's, uh, that's something I want to know. I'm not going to send it to you because my sister needs all the ones that are locked. But, um, yeah, I want to know who actually sat through this whole video. I don't even think I would. My mom won't. She'll be like, that's too long. I got stuff to do. My sister would, but she can't because then she's going to know she's got like 87. Hey, business. You want to come on camera? Oh, I know. I know. Um, so, yeah, let me know if, come on. You clawing all over me to get up here and then you back away. Come on. Come on. You're a business dog. You're a high-powered CEO. Oh. So, yeah, let me... Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I'm gonna make you famous. I'm gonna make you like one of those famous dachshunds. Hi. Look up here. Look at ya. Hey. Oh. What's wrong? Can you go outside? <gasps> What's wrong with your tail? Huh? You need to go outside? Okay, but no barking. Thank you. Alright guys. It has been a fun 17 hours spent with you, but I am going to catch my breath. I never talk for this long. Hi. Hi, baby. What's a good boy? Can you stand up like a human? Damn. Look at him, y'all. Isn't he the cutest thing ever? Look at his legs. Look how long his legs are. And you weigh more than five pounds, and that's supposed to be picking you up. So, thanks for watching. I will be back to my regularly scheduled, heavily edited videos soon. Hey, Yeti. Thank you. Alright, bye. See you guys. Bye-bye.